to discuss about the geometrical applications of complex numbers so first of all a very important question must be coming into your mind that why do only complex numbers have geometrical applications and why not real numbers the answer is very simple suppose you have been given a real number like say 5 or minus 3 or 10 then these real numbers have got just one component this is the 5 or the minus 3 each complex number has got two parts one part that is the x part which we call the real part and the other part the y part which is the imaginary part so since each complex number has got two parts when you represent this number then you will need a two dimensional plane you cannot represent a complex number on a single line or a real axis or a number line so first of all you will need a two dimensional plane and when you represent the complex number on a two dimensional plane which is also called the argand plane or the complex plane then these two different parts the x and the y the x which is the real part is represented along the real axis or the x axis and the y which is the imaginary part is represented along the imaginary axis or the y axis so because of this very beautiful property of complex number each complex number has got an inherent geometric property with it so almost all the things which you can do with a two dimensional vector you can do all those things with a complex number also so suppose i have been given a complex number so this complex number is z is equal to x plus i y obviously x is the real part and y is the imaginary part a complex number can be written like this or it can be written as an ordered pair also as x and y or when you represent this complex number in a two dimensional plane that is x y plane so you can represent it as a vector also like you see in this p is my complex number which is represented by this coordinate of coordinate x points x and y so when you join this point p with the origin o you get a vector and this vector also represents the complex number z is equal to x plus i y and this plane or this diagram is called the argon diagram all of you must be knowing this so this argon diagram represents z is equal to x plus i y both as a point that is p x y is a point and as a vector op like this is my vector op this complex number or the vector will have a length this length is given by r and this vector or the complex number will have an orientation or an angular position which we measure with respect to this x axis so when you measure the angular position or the orientation of this blue line the vector or the complex number so this angular position that is theta this is called this polar angle is called the argument of z and it is written as theta is equal to argument z so when the vector was z is equal to x plus i y if i write it in polar form that is in form of r and theta then what is this x it's very simple this is r and this is theta so this x will be r cos theta this y will be r sin theta so the complex number can be written as z is equal to x plus i y is equal to r times cos theta plus i sin theta so if we have to find the magnitude or the amplitude of this complex number that is r so this r is equal to mod x plus i y so mod x plus i y using pythagoras theorem this is x this is y it's very simple this r will be x root under x square plus y square since we know that y is equal to r sin theta and x is equal to r cos theta when we divide this tan theta is equal to y by x so i can write as theta is equal to tan inverse y by x so this is the argument of this complex number all of you must have studied addition of vectors in two dimension and in three dimension also so the same rules of vector addition come very naturally in complex numbers algebra and complex number also so when we have to add two complex numbers i have been given two complex number and one first one is z1 this is the vector or the complex number z2 and i have to find what will be z1 plus z2 
so in vector algebra or in vector geometry you have very simple rule that's the triangle law of addition the same law you can apply here also suppose z2 is the second vector then you displace this z2 so as to bring this this z2 vector here so that the tail of this z2 vector lies on the head of z1 so this vector i have displaced this z2 i have displaced from here to here and i can write this as and this z2 is my vector these two vectors this one and this one they are the same vector or the same complex number because their length are same and their orientation and their angle this theta 2 is same so effectively what i have done i have moved this z2 from here to here in order to find the addition that is the z1 plus z2 vector just add the tail of first vector to the head here this vector is z1 plus z2 similarly we can do subtraction of complex numbers also suppose this is the vector z1 and this is the vector z2 now i have to find what will be vector z2 minus z1 or the complex number z2 minus z1 this is vector z1 this is vector z2 and we don't know what is this because we have created a new thing but this much we know that this is a vector or a complex number such that if i in this z1 if i add this unknown quantity i will get z2 so this unknown quantity z2 minus z1 this is the vector z2 minus z1 suppose I have been given a complex number z1 this point another complex number z2 this point then the complex number connecting z1 to z2 is this vector or this complex number z2 minus z1 now let's see the triangle inequality this inequality is called the triangle inequality because it is very similar to a very important theorem in triangles any side of a triangle is less than the sum of the other two sides of the triangle and the other theorem is that the difference of any two sides of a triangle is less than the third side so if you see when i derive the proof of this inequality i will show in under what circumstance or in what cases this inequality will turn into an equality that is you will have an equal to sign so let's derive this part of the triangle inequality so mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square i can write this mod z1 plus z2 whole square as product of mod z1 plus z2 into mod z1 plus z2 conjugate this is very simple this is based upon the very simple rule that mod of z square or even where z is any complex number is equal to z multiplied by z bar so instead of z we are having z1 plus z2 and this is z1 plus z2 whole bar so when you expand this z1 plus z2 whole bar you will get z1 bar plus z2 bar so let's write this as is equal to z1 plus z2 into z1 bar plus z2 bar okay now you multiply the all the terms what you will get first of all you will get z1 into z1 bar that is mod z1 whole square plus you will get one z1 into z2 bar term z1 z2 bar plus you will get an z2 z1 bar plus you will get this z2 bar whole square so these two terms are very simple now i will concentrate myself on these two terms z1 z2 bar plus z2 z1 bar so can you say what can you say about these two terms these two terms are conjugate of each other you see if you take this now complex number z1 z2 bar and you take whole conjugate then what you will get you will get z1 bar and z2 bar bar it will become z2 so this is z1 bar z2 so these two things z1 z2 bar and z2 z1 bar are conjugate of each other that is if you concentrate on these two terms so this first term is z1 z2 bar plus the second term is z1 z2 bar conjugate okay now what is a complex number plus its conjugate 
it's very simple suppose a complex number is x plus i y and conjugate will be x minus i y so if you add a complex number and its conjugate you will get two times the real part of that complex number the same thing we will use here so what we will get here we will get it will become two times the real part of z1 z2 bar so from here we will reach this step so what we have actually got it the, these two terms are two times real part of z1 into z2 bar so this also z1 z2 bar is also a complex number. real part of any complex number will lie between say modulus real part of z this is also very simple that the real part of z lies between modulus z and minus modulus z i can write as that two times real part of z1 z2 bar is less than or equal to modulus z1 z2 bar two times real z1 z2 bar is less than or equal to this will be two here also two times modulus of z1 z2 bar so if i make use of this inequality that is i substitute this thing here then this can write it as is less than or equal to mod z1 square plus two times mod z1 into this mod of z2 bar or z2 is same so i can write it as mod z2 plus mod z2 square this is nothing but mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square if you bring this thing here you have got that mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square mod z1 plus z2 whole square is less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square if you remove the square from both the sides so this will become mod z1 plus z2 is less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 now we have to see under what circumstance or in what cases this equality sign will hold true this starting from this place till we reached this place one place we converted this equality into inequality and when it got converted because of this thing that is the real part of z1 z2 bar is less than or equal to modulus z1 z2 bar so if this inequality has to be equality then this thing has to be equality because the moment you have this as equality this inequality will be converted into equality and you will have this as equal so now i am looking for a case in which real part of z1 z2 bar is equal to modulus of z1 z2 bar so when can uh, the real part of a complex number be equal to its modulus it can be equal only when this number that is z1 z2 bar is a real number and it is greater than zero like say five or six or eight not minus five because the moment you have minus five the real part of minus five is minus five and modulus is five so it cannot be equal so the one and only case in which this equality can hold true that is the real part of a complex number equal to the modulus of that complex number will be when this complex number that is z1 z2 bar is greater than zero divide both lhs and rhs by mod z2 whole square so what i will get that is if i divide z1 z2 bar and you have my modulus z2 whole square here and greater than zero what is modulus z2 whole square this is z1 z2 bar divided by z2 into z2 bar so this z2 bar and z2 bar will be cancelled and so you will be left with this thing that is z1 by z2 is greater than 0 and it is a positive real number and of course you see when we are dealing with this case we are dealing with a non-trivial case this modulus z1 plus z2 bar can be equal to modulus z1 plus modulus z2 when one of the numbers that is z1 or z2 is equal to 0 suppose your z2 is 0 then this will be equality sign so we are dealing with the non-trivial case in non-trivial case i mean that none of the numbers that is z1 or z2 none of these numbers are equal to zero so when none of these numbers are equal to zero so this z1 by z2 greater than zero this means each of the complex number is a positive scalar multiple of the other only in that case this inequality will turn into an equality now let's prove this part of the triangle inequality we will use this inequality what i will do i can write that modulus z1 is equal to modulus z1 plus z2 minus z2 this i can write 
now i can apply triangle inequality on this thing taking this as my first complex number this part and this is the second complex number so this will be less than or equal to modulus z1 plus z2 plus modulus of z2 because modulus of minus z2 is same as modulus z2 if you bring now this modulus z2 sign this side you will get modulus z1 minus modulus z2 is less than or equal to modulus z1 plus z2 so we have proved the first part of the triangle inequality also you interchange the role of z1 and z2 here you can get this modulus z2 minus modulus z1 is less than or equal to modulus z1 plus z2 so what does this mean this means that if i take the whole modulus also then also this inequality holds because i have got a complex number which is given like this starting from origin suppose this is my complex number and this is given by z1 this is my origin two has to be like this that is these two vectors or these two complex number that is z1 and z2 have the same direction so for equality sign to hold true if one vector is like this that is if one complex number is like this in this direction other has to be in the same direction okay so when these two vectors are parallel you get equality sign here the moment these two numbers say z1 and z2 are parallel you won't be able to form a triangle the moment you are not able to form the triangle this inequality thing will not come into picture so suppose your z1 is a 1 plus 4i and your z2 is say 2 plus 8i now these two vectors are exactly parallel so once you find z1 plus z2 their modulus will be equal to modulus of this z1 plus modulus of z but remember if this vector z2 is anti parallel that if i have another complex number given by minus 2 minus 8i so you see these two complex numbers are in opposite directions so if you take the sum that is the addition of these two complex number and find their modulus the equality sign will not hold true equality sign holds true only when this z1 by z2 is some number lambda and this number real number has to be positive then only this equality sign will hold true 